Good morning again, everybody. It's good to see all of you here this morning. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are enjoying the heat wave that's happening all across Australia at the moment? <laughs> I love summer, but sometimes the heat can get a little bit too much. So this is just a public service announcement. Make sure you stay protected. Make sure you stay cool. Stay inside if you can because uh, it can get really dangerous out there if it gets too hot, all right? My name is Daniel Indrajaya. I'm one of the pastors here at The Rocks Church. I want to extend my welcome to all of you here this morning. If you are new to The Rocks, we have a, a new guest lounge outside in the foyer area uh, set up especially for you. So after the gathering today, don't go home right away. Uh, make sure you visit us at our new guest lounge so that uh, we can get to know you a little bit better. And we have a special gift that we want to give you as well. So uh, that'll be fantastic if you could do that. And we're going to be here for 75 minutes. Soon, Michael and the band are going to lead us in singing a few songs. The lyrics are going to be on the screen. So follow along, sing along with us. But for now, can I get you to stand up on your feet and greet the people around you and tell them, stay cool. It's the second week of December and there's no better way to start our Sunday by singing some familiar carols. And we're going to start with Joys of the World. I want you to sing along with us and sing with smile and we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ today.
Your name. 
receive our praise. Thank you, Jesus, for you have been our strong tower, our refuge, our very present help in times of need. The psalmist said, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. And he is our Noel. Our Emmanuel God is with us. Let us sing this song as we celebrate his birth. I lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? You are our very present help. there from beginning set the land upon the sea shine a light into the darkness created every living thing who can knit us all together into a perfect masterpiece breathe a breath inside my lungs and give my heart a steady beat
I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you, neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over your lives. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going because God loves you. God loves you. Whatever you are going through right now, know this, that the Lord watches over your life. No matter how you feel about Him, He will never leave you. He will always be by your side. So God, this morning, we want to declare our dependence on you afresh. Lord, this morning, we want to come to you in confidence, knowing that we are accepted as we are, knowing that you are always by our side. As we watch over the hills, our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We thank you so much, God, for being with us here this morning. No matter what challenges may come our way, we are confident that we can overcome because you are always by our side. We thank you. We love you. We pray and we declare this in confidence. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Everybody who agrees with me, say amen. Amen, amen. amen. Wow. You may take your seat. You know, I love coming to church and be reminded again and again uh, as we sing the songs of faith. That song comes from Psalm 121. What a great reminder, hey, for all of us. I know life can be really, really tough sometimes and, and being reminded that we have God on our side always helps, gives us that courage that we need again. Hey, welcome again to church, everybody. If you are new to The Rocks, my name is Daniel Indrajaya. If you're not new to The Rocks, my name is still Daniel Indrajaya. And I want to let you know that our slogan around here is no perfect people allowed. Um, if you think that you need to get your life together before you come to church, well, I'm here to let you know that that is not the case at all. You are welcome here. We gather here every Sunday because we believe there's nobody perfect, but we believe in a great, loving, gracious God whom we can always count on uh, to forgive us, to give us that grace that we need every single time. So no matter who you are, whatever you've done or have not done, you are welcome in this place to join us, all right? And in a moment, we are, I'm so excited about this because our very own Sidara is going to continue our series, Light of the World. Come on. You know, if you've never heard Sidara before, she is one of the most amazing communicators in our city. You will be blessed. So I want to encourage you to lean in because I believe you're here for a reason and God wants to say something specifically to your situation. So I want you to lean in and, and be blessed this morning. Actually, this whole Christmas season, this is a great opportunity for us to invite our friends to come to church. This coming Sunday, my friend, Pastor Bob Bradbury from Saddleback Church in California, one of the largest churches in the world, he's going to come here and speak the Word of God to us. It's going to be amazing. I want you to invite your friends to come because this is once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us to hear from someone of his caliber. You're going to be so blessed, all right? And... Uh, being the Christmas season, on the 24th of December, we're going to have our own Christmas Eve celebration right here in our church. But we're not going to do it in the morning, but we're going to have two all-in gatherings at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. What that means is there will be no kids' facilities. I want your children to come here to the main hall, main auditorium, because we're going to have a family-friendly Christmas Eve gathering celebration it's going to be just a one hour gathering so it's going to be short but it's going to be packed all right uh this place is going to be full so make sure you come early invite your friends to come as well and be prayerful whom you can invite to come to church during this season all right now uh, we come to a place in a gathering where we're going to continue to worship our great god through our giving if you are new to the rocks let me remind you again that you are not under any obligation to give whatsoever We'd like to think that this gathering is our gift to you, so sit back, relax, and enjoy your time with us. But for the rest of us who call this church our home, uh, for all of us who are followers of Jesus Christ, it is a privilege, isn't it, to be able to honor God through our finance. So uh, there are different ways for you to give. Majority of us choose to automate our giving, and I want to encourage you, if you have not done so, to automate your giving. This will help you to plan your giving instead of giving haphazardly. It helps you in your budgeting, in your finance planning, and it helps us as well as a church to 
to plan our spending, to plan our budget as well. So I want to encourage you to do that. But there are many different ways for you to give. Push pay, the envelope on your seat, or direct deposit. Those are some, those are some of the different ways for you to give this morning. All right? As you are preparing to give, I want to take some time to speak to the parents in the house. Okay. Christian parents especially. Let me ask you this question. Would you say that your child's spiritual development is very important to you? If I can guess, the answer is yes, obviously. I have a 13-year-old myself, and his development, especially his spiritual development, is extremely important to me. I saw this on social media a few weeks ago, and it's quite thought-provoking, actually. How to raise secular kids in three easy steps. Number one, fit church into your schedule when it's convenient. Number two, devalue the message by living a church life and a different home life. And number three, give higher priority to school and sports activities than church involvement. Easy as one, two, three. Quite thought-provoking, isn't it? Uh, and it's true. Church is very important in your journey of faith, in your child's journey of faith. The church plays a major role and a very, very important part. But do you know that on average, as a church, we only have 40 hours with your child? Your child's small group leader only has, on average, 40 hours per year. There are 52 weeks in a year, and there are some weeks where you go away for holiday. There are some weeks when your child is sick. There are some weeks when, uh, you know, you have birthday parties and all. So, on average, we only have about 40 hours of FaceTime with your child. It's not that many, isn't it? It's not that many when you compare it with the 3,000 hours that you have at home not counting the sleeping time, the going to school time, you have 3,000 hours to affect your child's spiritual development at home. So what that means is there has to be a partnership between the church life and the home life. There has to be a partnership between the church and parents. And that's why we are here to help. We have worked so hard to create this website called parents.therocks.church. We are that serious about helping you to be a better parent. Uh, you can visit parents.therocks.church or if you forget this address, uh, you can always go to www.therocks.info. Maybe some of you have already bookmarked that on your mobile device. If you go to www.therocks.info, you will be directed to parents.therocks.church and inside parents.therocks.church, you will have this amazing contents. I'm so proud to be announcing this to you. You're going to find weekly parent queue, weekly Bible stories uh, in the video format, weekly blog for parents for every stage of your child's development from birth to year 12. If you don't know what to do, what to say, you know, why is my child behaving a certain way, we have a, a guide, we have a blog for your parents, and also we have current songs that they're currently singing at the moment in our kids' ministry. So here's what you can do. If you have not bookmarked, uh, therocks.info. Again, this is a wonderful resource for you. You can find a lot of stuff here. You can, uh, you can register for whatever. Uh, you can find out songs that we sing here at the, at the big church as well. And right there in the middle tab, you have Parent Q. If you click that, you'll be directed to this website, Parent Q. Okay? And as you can see, no matter what stage your child is in, from babies to toddler, walkers, uh, Pre-kindy, kindy, pre-primary to year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, even transit, year six and seven, uh, everything will be there. Whatever your child is learning at church, you will know it there. For example, this is really cool, all right? For, let's say you click upstreet, year four and five. Here's what you're going to find. Look at this. This is the December overview of what they're learning. They're learning about joy. What is joy? Finding a way to be happy even when things don't go your way. Isn't that fantastic? That's what joy is. Finding ways to be happy, even when things don't go your way. I mean, even you as an adult, you need to know that. <laughs> I need to know that, right? And there you can find the week one activities for every day. If it's coloring for the toddler, you know, if it's, if it's uh, different activities, it's going to be there. The Bible stories are going to be there uh, for every week of the month. It's going to be there so that you don't have to worry about what do I do with my spare time. A lot of time, 
parents are wasting precious time during mealtime, for example. What do you talk about with your child during mealtime? When you drive them to school, you know, these are precious moments that you can use to carry out spiritual conversation. But that's not all. If you go back to the homepage of parents.therocks.church, on the top left-hand corner, you will see these three lines. If you click that, right, you will see all the different resources available. The parent queue we've already seen. Uh, the songs that we sing, uh, amazing songs, all right? Whatever songs you used to sing like when you were a child, man, it's nothing compared to the songs that they're singing right now. And these are um, the different uh, age group, the different stage of life your child might be in. And there's always a guide for you to know what to do, what to say, that everything is just a phase. Jaden is in year eight this year. And you'll be reminded as well how many weeks you have left with them. I have 260 weeks left with Jaden. 260 weeks. So sad. Time is running really, really quickly. You need to make the most of the time that you have with them. And I want to encourage you parents to use these resources available to you. We are the only church in Australia that I know of that take this so seriously about helping parents to help your kids to grow in their spiritual journey. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, make the most of the resources because we're here to help, all right? Uh, let me conclude with this. As a parent, some of the most important things you do for your child don't happen in a single day. But as you make small deposits in their life day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, over time, this is what's going to make the most difference in your child's life. So I want to encourage you, keep bringing them to come to church. Um, go to parents.therocks.church and make sure you use all the resources available at your disposal. If you have any question about this, uh, make sure you approach me, you approach Mike and any of the kids' leaders. They would be able to direct you uh, and answer some of your questions, okay? Now, it is time for us to give. So uh, host team, you can release the bucket. And as they do, let's see what's happening in the life of our church. Hey everyone, welcome to The Rocks. My name is John and I'm so glad that you're spending part of your Sunday with us here today. Coming up after this, we're gonna be hearing an encouraging message that we're praying will help you wherever you're at. We believe that the Word of God has the ability to help us overcome whatever situation you may find yourself in here today. But before we get to this, we're gonna see what's happening around the life of our church. Let's have a look. If this is your first time here today, I want you to know that one of the things we say around here is that The Rocks is a place where you can belong before you believe. We don't believe you are here by accident, and no matter your life story, we would love to get to know you. Because of this, we've made a new guest lounge where you can meet some of our team members over our coffee, and we also have a small gift for you to take home too, so be sure to stop by and say hello after the gathering here today. Every week at The Rocks, there are volunteers who play an essential part in reaching people far from God by serving on a variety of ministry teams. Volunteering your gifts and talents stretches your faith and allows you to experience God in a whole new way help play a part in growing this community of faith in order to make an even bigger impact in the city by signing up at therocks.info or at the Connections Desk after the gathering here today. Coming up on the 24th of December, we will be having Christmas Eve at The Rocks. We will sing Christmas carols, listen to a seasonal message, and enjoy the festive season together. This is an all-in, family-friendly gathering, so that means everyone from kids to grandparents are welcome to join in on the celebration. We will have both 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. times available, so be sure to stop by. We look forward to seeing you there. Thanks again for spending part of your Sunday with us. To keep in touch with everything happening around the rocks, you can find updates and some inspirational stories on Facebook and Instagram by searching the handle at The Rocks Perth. If you have questions about anything you've heard today or just want to find out more about our church, stop by the Connection Desk or visit us online at therocks.church.
Good morning, everyone. How are we doing on this lovely Sunday morning? 11 a.m. gathering, how are we doing? Are we good? You don't sound very good. Are you happy to be in church this morning? Yeah, okay, that's a bit better. I believe you now. That's awesome. Hey, if we haven't met before, my name is Sadara, and I have the privilege of being on staff here at The Rocks, and I also have the privilege of speaking to you for the next little while, so I'm really excited about that. And uh, just before we start, I'm just curious, um, by a show of hands, who here managed to come to The Rocks celebrate Christmas last weekend? Did anyone manage to come? Oh, a fair few people. That's awesome. Did you love it? Did you have a good time? Was it great? Yeah, it was awesome. I'm glad you had a good time. It was phenomenal, wasn't it? Um, you know, so much work goes in to making that production what it is. You know, hours and hours of people practicing and, and not just the performers on stage, but so many people working behind the scenes in production and, and the camera guys and the audio and the, the sound. Audio and sound are the same thing. Clearly, my technical knowledge isn't very great, but so many people work behind the scenes to make that production what it is. And uh, you know, on that day, I was doing tickets on the door for all four gatherings, and I uh, managed to chat to people as they were coming out of the auditorium and managed to watch their faces as they were coming out. And so many, every single person was just blown away by what they saw. And you know, we served 2, 000, nearly 2,000 people that whole Sunday, and so many people who never been to church or never heard about Jesus came and encountered something of God. So that's incredible, isn't it? What a privilege that we get to be a part of a community that is always wanting to shine the light of Jesus to every single person that we come into contact with, hey? And so in the spirit of that, we're going to continue. I'm going to talk about the theme of the Rock Celebrate Christmas. We're continuing on in that theme, and we're going to be talking about the light of the world today. But um, as we dive in, why don't you bow your heads and pray with me? Father God, we thank you so much for your presence, God. Thank you that you are already here. Thank you that as we sing about you, as we come and worship you, that your presence inhabits the praises of your people. And Father, I ask that as these words come out of my mouth, God, may they not just be words, but may they be words from you to the hearts of your people, Father, so that as we leave here today, we won't leave the same way we came in, but we'll leave full of the light and the love of Jesus, the light that Jesus carries and the light that he longs to to give us. So Father, would you open up our hearts, would you open up our eyes to receive your word this morning and to hear you and to see your son Jesus. And everybody who agrees with me say together, amen, amen, amazing. Well, I got to tell you as we start that Christmas is really my favorite time of the year. It really is, especially since I moved to Australia. Because you see, Christmas is my favorite holiday of the year, and summer is my favorite season of the year. So the fact that I get to have Christmas in the summertime, it blows my mind. I am literally overjoyed about that. And uh, I brought you something, I brought something to show you this morning. I mean, this really has nothing to do with my message this morning, but I just couldn't resist. You see, on Friday night, Dev, my husband, he's a dentist, he went for his work Christmas party and they do this like secret Santa game, but they have like a secret Santa swapsy, so you can swap your gift. And so what he ended up with was this little guy, he brought home this guy on Friday night. How amazing is this? I don't know if you can see him. How cool is that? This to me is the definition of an Aussie Christmas. Santa wearing board shorts, carrying a surfboard, wearing sunglasses. I mean, that is great. And just when you think it can't get any better, hang on, hang on. I mean, come on. Look, uh, the, 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 yeah, it's just amazing. I've got to turn it off because I was distracted the whole weekend. And I'm going to give this back to you, Yvonne, because I was like, I just couldn't stop looking at it. I kept playing it over and over and over again. It's literally one of the best things I've seen. So that, to me, is the definition of an Aussie Christmas. You know, the sunshine, surfboards are out, summer, everyone's happy, they're having a barbecue. And I have had a lot of snowy, white, cold Christmases in England before I moved to Australia. And, I, and, and they were magical too. You know, we used to bundle up in our coats and our scarves and we'd go down to all the Christmas markets and, and we'd watch the snow fall and we'd sip hot chocolate by the fireplace. And, you know, it was just a magical time. We'd go 
caroling at Lincoln Cathedral by candlelight, and it was just beautiful as well. I mean, I guess Christmas is just magical, whether it's hot or whether it's cold, because Christmas is just great. Dude, Christmas is amazing. I love Christmas. I love when the Christmas lights go up in the city. I love when the Christmas carols start playing on the radio. I love when the Christmas movies start coming out on Netflix. Hallmark Channel, best Christmas movies ever. And you know those little lint Santa Claus starts coming out in Woolies? They're so yummy, I love them. I love Christmas when the festivities start and the families and the friends start gathering. Christmas truly feels like the most wonderful time of the year. That's what they tell us, isn't it? Christmas, the most wonderful time of the year. And yet, perhaps for some of you here this morning, as you sit in your seat and you've come to church, you hear that statement, Christmas, the most wonderful time of the year, and that hangs a little bit heavy on your heart. Because while Christmas can be the most wonderful time of the year for some people, as you look around your life, as you look around your family, as you look around your finances or your health, perhaps it doesn't seem all that wonderful to you. Because the truth is Christmas can be a really exhausting time for a lot of people. I mean, think about it. Family tensions are heightened. Financial burdens are greater. For some of us here, this is our first Christmas after the loss of a loved one. Or perhaps you're here and we're talking about family at Christmas, but your family is far, far away and you won't be with them at Christmas. Perhaps for some of you here, there's some job uncertainties going on, some health concerns. You see, those things don't just stop because the Christmas carols start. Everybody's life, everybody's Christmas doesn't resemble a Hallmark movie, does it? And so we ask the question, can we really say that Christmas is truly the most wonderful time of the year? Is Christmas really the most wonderful, the most magical, the most glorious time of the year? I'm going to say, yes, it is. And with the rest of my time, I'm going to show you why. You see, there are four accounts of the life of Jesus in the Bible, and we call them the Gospels. They were written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you see, they tell us of the birth, the life, and the death of Jesus Christ. And if you're here this morning, and maybe this is your first time to church, maybe you, know, you wouldn't call yourself a Christian, or you don't really believe in God, and you've never read the Bible, that's totally fine. We're so glad that you're here. You're so welcome with us. But perhaps even if you're not familiar with the Bible, maybe all of us would be familiar in some way, shape, or form of the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. You know, maybe you can think back to when you were in school, or maybe you're a parent here, and uh, you recently went to one of your children's school nativity plays, you know, where they reenact the story of the birth of Jesus. Um, I remember the, the year that I left England, um, I have a, one of my best friends in England is called Gemma, and I'm godmom to her little son, Solomon. And uh, Solomon, he's all of about five, he came running up to me at church one day, and he was like, Dara, Dara, guess what? He calls me Dara, because he couldn't say Sadara when he was younger, so Dara is a nickname that stuck. So he's like, Dara, Dara, guess what? I was like, what, Solomon? He's like, I'm going to be in my school nativity. I was like, oh my gosh, Solomon, that's amazing. Well done. He's like, Dara, will you come and watch? I was like, of course I will come and watch. I wouldn't miss it for the world. And then he goes, Guess what I'm going to be in the nativity play, Dara? I was like, oh, well, um, are you, are you going to be Joseph? N no. Oh, okay. Uh, are, you, are you going to be a wise man? N no. Huh? Are you going to be a shepherd? No, Dara. Okay. Are you going to be the star? No. Are you going to be the innkeeper? No. Like running out of options. Are you going to be a sheep that came with the shepherd? No, Dara. Now he's getting really impatient. And I'm running out of ideas because I'm like, how many more characters were present at the birth of Jesus? And he's like, oh, Dara, you're just taking too long. I'll just tell you because you're never going to guess. I'm like, yeah, sounds about right. And he goes, in my school nativity play, Dara, it's so obvious, Dara. I can't believe you didn't get it. In my school nativity play, I am going to be the chicken. I was like... The chicken, 
Of course you're going to be the chicken. Silly Dara, why didn't Dara think of that? Chicken played an important part in the birth of Jesus. Of course it did. I mean, I learned a lot that night, you see, about the nativity story, because I saw crabs, alligators, and camels at the birth of Jesus in that nativity play. You won't find that in the Bible, will you? No, you won't. But you see, this nativity story that the kids reenact year after year after year, we find it in the Gospels. We find it in the book of Matthew and Luke and Mark and John. And in the books of Matthew and Luke, we find similar accounts of the birth of Jesus. They tell us about this nativity story. But when you get to the last gospel, the gospel of John, John tells it to us completely differently. Here's what he says about the birth of Jesus in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and he's talking about Jesus there. In the beginning was the Word, in the beginning was Jesus, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning, through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John doesn't give us a narration about how it happened. He doesn't tell us about the manger. He doesn't tell us about the shepherds or the crabs or the alligators. He doesn't tell us about any of that. He doesn't tell us how it happened. He tells us why it happened. He tells us about the significance of the birth of Jesus. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. You see, when Jesus was born, when he came into the world, the Jewish people, they were waiting for their Messiah. They were waiting for a Savior. They were waiting for the Redeemer that had been prophesied years and years ago. They were waiting for the coming King, the King of the Jews, to come and rescue them from their plight, from their bondage, from their darkness. And 700 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah, he said this. He says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And he was talking about Jesus. You see, when Jesus was born, this prophecy, it was fulfilled. The promise of God came to pass. You see, Jesus is not just a promise for the Jewish people. Jesus is a promise for all mankind. Jesus is a promise of God for all humanity. And this Christmas season, I believe that God wants to remind you that He is in the business of fulfilling His promises, that He is in the business of keeping His word. The Bible says that when the word of God is spoken, it does not return to Him empty. In Isaiah 55, it says, so it is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish the purpose for what I have sent it. The word of God, it doesn't return to Him empty. And in the passage that we just read, what does John call Jesus? Do you remember in chapter one? He says, in the beginning was the word, Jesus. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The word is Jesus Christ. You see, this is what we celebrate at Christmas, the spoken word of God being fulfilled in the living word of God, Jesus Christ. The spoken word, the spoken promise of God coming to pass, being fulfilled, being made a reality in the living word of God, in his son, Jesus Christ. And this Christmas, I wanna encourage you and I wanna remind you that every promise that God has made to you. Every word that has been spoken over you, it's yes and amen in Jesus Christ. It has already been fulfilled. Christmas is the greatest reminder of the faithfulness of God. It's the greatest reminder that whatever you're waiting for, whatever you're hoping for, whatever you're hanging on for, that it will come to pass because God is faithful. God is not a man that he should lie. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he kept his promise, then he will keep his promise now. Jesus is the greatest testimony. Christmas is the greatest picture of our faithful God. And so if this Christmas season you find yourself getting weary in the waiting, if you find your heart doubting in the darkness, if you find yourself getting hopeless with heaviness, remember the significance of the birth of Jesus. Remember the significance of the birth 
of our Savior King. The significance of Jesus coming into the world, the significance of Christmas. This is what we celebrate at Christmas. Hope, Jesus Christ, our living hope. And as I was reading these verses over and over again this week, I, I actually wanted to preach from a different passage, but I couldn't get away from the words of John when he talks about Jesus. And he says, in him was life, and that life, it was a light to all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And in fact, Jesus himself confirms the words of John when he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but they will have the light of life. John, he writes about the birth of Jesus, but he has a revelation that Jesus is not just a light to the Jewish people, but Jesus is a light of the world, that he was a light of the world to every person from every tribe, tongue, and nation. He was the light of the world. You see, when Jesus was born, the whole world was in darkness. It was shrouded in darkness, and so that's why we needed a savior. We needed a light to come into our world, and so Jesus came into our world to be that Messiah to be that savior, to be that redeemer, to whoever believed in him, to whoever put their faith in him. And his promise is that when you follow him, you will no longer ever walk in darkness, but you will have the light of life. And this life that Jesus gives, it's not just physical. It's not just temporary. It's not just passing. It's not just fleeting. The life that Jesus gives is eternal and it is lasting. He came to give us the gift of eternal life, the gift of eternal light. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Guess what? That's Christmas. For God so loved the world, for God so loved you and you and you and me, that he gave his one and only son, Jesus. That's Christmas so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. This is the light of life that Jesus talks about. And let me tell you, when I first understood the reality of, of Christmas, that, that this incredibly powerful, almighty, sovereign God, he left the glory and the heights of heaven to come down, take on human form, become flesh in the form of a little tiny baby so that I could have the light of life. That changes everything. That through his eventual death on a cross, that he would forgive and free us of your sin and my sin. And now every punishment, every iniquity was laid on him. And every sin, every mistake, every failure, every wrongdoing that I have committed, I don't have to pay the price for. He has freed us from the price and the penalty of sin once and for all. This is the greatest darkness that he freed us from. This is why we needed him to be the light of the world. And he came and he gave himself so that you and I could be free. And this Christmas, yet again, we remind ourselves that we have the light of the world living and breathing in us. And so when you come across challenges this season, when you come across difficulties or hardships, when things don't go your way, when something that you had been hoping for, when it doesn't happen, remind yourself that you have the light of life, the light of the world living and breathing in you. You get to look up to Him, the light of the world, the light that dispels darkness, the light that changes situations, the light that guides us, the light that walks with us, the light Light that keeps shining for us over and over and over again. And this Christmas season, Jesus, the light of the world, he wants to come and light up your world. All the parts of your world that have gone dark, all the parts of your world that have got damaged or broken or bruised, he is the light of the world. In him was the light of life. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. That's what John said. Do you know why? Because this light that Jesus has, it's not just a little small ray. It's not just a little ember. It's not just a little trickle of light. The light that Jesus brings is overpowering. It's searing. It's a burning flame and it dispels the darkness. Christmas is the greatest reminder that light defeated darkness. 
Light defeated darkness, and darkness now doesn't have the same power that it did. Sin doesn't have the same power that it did. Grief doesn't have the same power that it did. Death doesn't have the same power that it did. Tragedy doesn't have the same power that it did. Hurt and pain, darkness does not have the same power that it did because light defeats darkness. And the equation is pretty simple. Light always wins. Jesus always wins. And this Christmas, let that be a reminder to you that because Jesus always wins, because Jesus, the light of the world, he came down into this world, you will never be overcome by darkness. This season, we don't rejoice because there's no darkness in the world. No, we rejoice because darkness will never match up to his light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And it never will. So, we come back to our original question. Is Christmas really the most wonderful time of the year? Is it truly the most magical, the most glorious time of the year? Yes, yes it is. Because Christmas is wonderful not because of family, although family is pretty wonderful. Christmas isn't wonderful because of the presents, although the presents are pretty wonderful. And Christmas isn't wonderful because life is going great, the presents are all decorated, the turkey is cooking well. And neither is Christmas not wonderful because life isn't going that well, because the family is fighting, or the finances haven't come through. No, Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. Not because of what is or isn't happening, but because of what has already happened. Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year because of what already did happen. Because at Christmas we celebrate that Jesus, the light of the world, He came down into our world. He took on human form, God with us, Emmanuel. That is why Christmas is the most wonderful, the most glorious, the most magical time of the year. And do you know what? This truth, this gift, this promise, it's not just for this time of the year. It's for every month, for every season, for every occasion. We celebrate it right now, but actually this is the gift that keeps on giving, truly keeps on giving. What we celebrate at Christmas is not about what, it's not about how we celebrate, Christmas is about who we celebrate. And we celebrate Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And let me leave you with this, this morning. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever walks with me, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but they will have the light of life. What does light mean? ultimately do. You know when you go into a dark room and you turn a light on, what happens? What, what does it do? It, you can see, right? Light enables you to see. And I believe this morning for us, that's what God wants to do for us all over again. He wants to enable us to see. And I don't mean just see with physical eyes, but I mean when you open up your heart and you behold and you see Jesus, something changes on the inside of you. You know when in the nativity story, when the wise men and the shepherds, when they saw Jesus, what does it say that they did? They fell down and they worshipped Him. Don't you find that strange that grown men would fall prostrate before a little tiny baby. But you see, they had a revelation of who he was. They had a revelation that he was the light of the world. Because when you see Jesus, when you truly behold him, you can't help but worship. You can't help but fall down. You can't help but give him glory. And this Christmas season, has our vision got a little bit blurry? Has the stuff of life impaired our sight? Because this whole Christmas season, it's an invitation to come.
It's an invitation to come and to see Him, to behold Him, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the light of our world. Every Christmas carol is centered around giving glory to Jesus. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Fall on your knees, or oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night, O oh, night divine, when Christ was born. You see, we say these words and we sing these carols, but do we really miss the point of Christmas? Do we really miss what they're pointing to? They're pointing to giving glory to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. This morning, I don't have three points for you to take home. I, I don't have stuff for you to go and do. I just have a simple invitation an invitation for you to come, to come again and to open up your heart and allow God to show you Jesus again. Some of you for the first time and some of us who have been Christians for years and years and years, we need a new revelation of who He is. No matter how long you've been a Christian, you can never get to the end of who Jesus is. And we need to keep our hearts continually seeing and beholding to not lose the wonder and the awe and the glory of the light of the world. So my invitation to you this morning is to come again, is to still your hearts, is to open up your hearts to allow Jesus, the light of the world, to come and to show you who He is. Because when you are awakened in your soul, when you are awakened in your heart to who He is, your heart will be moved, your strength will increase, your hope will be renewed. You know, Isaiah the prophet, he said, to the people walking in darkness, there was a great light. On the people living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of his government and his peace there shall be no end. He will reign on the throne of David. He will reign across the kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from that time on and then forevermore. Isaiah is talking about Christmas. He's prophesying about this moment right here that we celebrate every single year. And the people that he's talking about are still us. For unto us a child was born, unto us a son was given. Come again and let's really look at the joy of the season, the joy, of the true joy of Christmas. Jesus, the light of the world, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And as we come this morning, let's leave our concerns and our troubles and our worries, maybe our doubts and our fears aside. And if we just sit for a moment and allow God to open up our hearts to show us Jesus, we will be moved to worship. We will be moved to give Him glory. We will be moved to bow before Him. Let's open up our hearts as we listen to this song and allow Jesus to shine His light on us. Oh, 
Jehovah. Glory to the light of the world. Come on. the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Glory, glory, glory to the light of the world. Allow praise and adoration and devotion to rise up in your heart right now. He is the light of the world, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. <laughs> Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace, our light, our world. Come on, glory, glory, glory to Him, the light of the world. Yes, Lord, glory to you. Glory to the light of the world. Come on, give Him praise this morning. Come on, would you adore Him? Would you give Him all your adoration? Would you worship Him this morning? Yes, Lord, come on. One last time. To the light of the world. Come on, sing with me. Father, we give you all the glory, all the adoration, and all the praise that is new you do your name, Jesus. We declare that you are the light of the world. Father, thank you that as we go into this Christmas season, we take the light of the world with us. Whatever we face, what challenges we come across, we have the light and the life of Jesus, eternity living and breathing within us. This Christmas season, church, let's not miss him. Let's not miss the invitation. Let's not lose the power of the grace of our God who sent, who gave His one and only Son, Jesus, so that you and I would have the light of life forever. Amen. Well, that brings us to the end of our time together this morning. Uh, but we've got some prayer leaders who would love to pray with you. And, you know, maybe if you're going through a challenging time this Christmas and you want to talk to somebody about it, you'd value somebody standing with you in prayer, then do come forward and our prayer leaders will just be here, just at the foot of the stage, and they'd love to stand and pray with you. But it's the custom in our church to go from this place with a prayer of blessing. And if you're comfortable to do so, why don't you raise your hands and allow me to speak a blessing over us. Father, we thank you for the light of the world that is Jesus Christ. We fix our eyes firmly on him, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And we're trusting God that in this season, that as we go from this place, as we walk into the next few weeks, 
that you will help us to see Jesus, to behold him again and again in a new, fresh way. Give us the revelation. Open our hearts, God, to see and behold the King of Kings so that we can truly come before him with our worship. And Father, I speak the blessing of God, the highest blessing of God on all your people gathered here this morning. The pressed down, shaken together, overflowing blessing of God on all of our lives during this Christmas season, over our marriages, over our families, over our children, over our finances, over our health, over our societies, over our schools, over our workplaces, wherever we go, may we carry the light and the life of Jesus with us so that people would come to know him and so many others would be blessed, both now and forevermore. And if you agree with me this morning, why don't you say together, Amen. Amen. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Have a great day. God bless you.